Now, we are getting ready to start this meeting, and we have a topic today on the flyer. It's written from selfish self-centeredness to the St. Francis Prayer, a lifelong journey. That's the topic. From selfish self-centeredness to the St. Francis Prayer, a lifelong journey. Now most of us, most of us know <clears throat> that we don't get from point A to point B without some things happening. Some things had happened to, to, to move me from one point to another point. And that's what we want to uh, present, especially for the people that's working with us. You know, uh, uh, hopefully this will help to uh, better uh, improve our understanding. Because one, one of our uh, functions is to grow in understanding and effectiveness after we have been through. And it's, we continue doing that. So hopefully this will be helpful. Uh, I'm glad to see so many of you all out here today. However, we do take these, uh, these workshops so that what's said today is not to be confined to these rooms, to these walls alone. Other people, hopefully, years to come, will hear what we present here today. So, in getting from selfish self-centeredness to the St. Francis Prayer, something happened, you know that. Now the doctor, in his opinion, he gave us what I would call a before and after scenario. And he did it more than once. It's like, like the Tide commercial, or the Cheers commercial. Y'all know what I'm talking about, washing powder detergent? Yeah. You know, little Johnny comes in the room, he walks in the house, mud dripping all over him from uh, uh, outside and whatnot. He's tracking up the carpet and everything. And then the mama looking all worried, and then she just smiles, take off his clothes, and three seconds later she throw it in the washing machine, pour the tie down, and presto, Johnny's sparkling clean again. <laughs> Before and after scenario. You know, mm -hmm. one of them is like the, uh, the uh, Rogaine commercial. <laughs> you ever yeah. heard of Rogaine? Yeah. <laughs> it's what it was like, I'm so, bald. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden I took this Rogaine, however I took it squalling or put it on the head or whatever, that presto abracadabra, a head full of hair. Y'all seen these commercials? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, what it was like, what happened? And basically what it's like now, right? Yeah. Basically that's what it's doing. So the doctor, in his opinion, he gave us a scenario on page X, 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 I. That's 31 in Roman numerals. He gives us one uh, example of that. X, 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 I. Y'all see that? Uh -huh. yeah. At the top of that page, they got a question called, what is the solution? Uh -huh. And if you pay attention, close attention, this is the only question that the doctor asks. This is the only question mark in the doctor's opinion. The doctor asks no other questions. He's always telling us something. But right here he asks a question. Uh, what is the solution? And he he said, perhaps I can best answer this by relating one of my experiences. About one year prior to this experience, a man was brought in to be treated for a chronic alcoholism. He had but partially recovered from a gastric hemorrhage and seemed to be a case of pathological mental deterioration. He had lost everything worthwhile in life and was only living, one might say, to drink. He frankly admitted and believed that for him there was no hope. Following the elimination of alcohol, there was found to be no permanent brain injury. He accepted the plan outlined in his book. Solution. He accepted the plan outlined in his book. One year later, he called to see me, and I experienced a very strange sensation. 
I knew the man by name and partly recognized his features, but there all resemblance ended. From a trembling, despairing, nervous wreck had emerged a man brimming over with self-reliance and self-contentment and contentment. I talked to him with him for some time, but was not able to bring myself to feel that I had known him before. To me he was a stranger, and so he left me. A long time has passed with no return to alcohol. Before and after, before he described the man's condition, he ex what happened, he accepted the plan outlined in his book, and he just told us uh, what it's like now for the man, mm -hmm. right? Then he said when, they need, when he needs a mental uplift, I often think of another case brought in by a physician prominent in New York. The patient had made his own diagnosis. And deciding his situation hopeless, had hidden in a deserted barn, determined to die. He was rescued by a surgeon party, and in desperate condition brought to me. Following his physical rehabilitation, he had a talk with me in which he frankly stated he thought the treatment a waste of effort. Unless I could assure him, which no one ever had, that in the future he would have the willpower to resist the impulse to drink. His alcoholic problem was so complex and his depression so great that we felt his only hope would be through what we then called moral psychology and we doubted even if that would have any effect. However, he did become sold on the ideas contained in his book, Solution. He has not had a drink for a great many years. I see him now and then and he is as fine a specimen of manhood as one could wish to be. I earnestly advise every alcoholic to read this book through, and though perhaps he came to scoff, he may remain in prayer. So the doctor gives us two scenarios here, and then he gives us another scenario in the middle of his doctor's opinion. I know people have heard this, so I'm going to quote it. Uh, he said, uh, men and women drink, essentially, because they like the effect produced by alcohol. Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the sensation so elusive that they, they et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then he said the problems had piled upon them and become astonishingly difficult to solve. Th then he said, he said, without, he said, uh, how did he put it? He said, on the other hand. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one scenario. He said, and on the other hand, he, he said, without this psychic change, there's very little hope for this man recovery, right? Mm -hmm. He said, but on the other hand, that's the other uh, scenario. The very same person who seemed doomed suddenly finds himself easily able to control his desire for alcohol. That's another before and after picture. He gives us three of them. In Bill's story, Bill gave us a lot of it. Bill stayed in the problem for the first nine pages of his story. Mm -hmm. He got into the solution after the first nine pages, right? He described what it was like, what, how deplorable his situation was, how dishonest, dishonest he was, how self and self-centered he was. He explained all of that in the first nine pages. But on page 13, on page 13, this would Bill say. On page 13, from a self-centered, egotistical son of a gun. I'm talking about a man stealing out his wife's purse in the 30s. You know, when things was real hard, he said on page 13, I was to test my thinking by the new God consciousness within. The new God, that means something happened, right? Right. So, we all remember that Bill had a, what you call a white light experience, right? Mm -hmm. But even though Bill had that white light experience, Bill also had to go through the steps. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? Yeah, sure. So this is what he's saying now, afterwards. I was to test my thinking by the new God consciousness within. Common sense would thus become uncommon sense. 
I was to sit quietly when in doubt, asking only for direction and strength to meet my problems as he would have me. Never was I to pray for myself, except as my request bore on my usefulness to others. Then only might I expect to receive, but that would be in great measure. My friend promised when these things were done, that means he hadn't done them yet. That means he's in the process of going through the steps, right? right? I would enter upon a new relationship with my creator. That I would have the elements of a way of living would answer all my problems. Belief in the power of God, plus enough willingness, honesty, and humility mm -hmm. to establish and maintain the new order of things was the essential requirements. Simple, but not easy. A price had to be paid. It meant, you know, and whenever Bill said about a price had to be paid, he tells you what it meant so you won't start thinking. Yeah. You know, because some people will say, well, the price been paid. Y'all y'all familiar with that? Um, yes. So 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 that a person won't go there. <laughs> a person won't go there, he tells you what it meant. It meant destruction of self-centeredness. I must turn in all things to the Father of light who, provide, who presides over us all. Another before and uh, after scenario. That's, that's basically what that was. Now, we have to go into the selfishness and self-centeredness and how it was described to us and our actions in it and we go there on page 60, on page 60, it starts on page 60, to show how deep this thing really was. We're going to have to look at what's called our basis of operations. Y'all heard what I said? Yes. What <laughs> page? Page 60, I believe. Here, they're going to describe what I call our basis of operations. I don't want to miss anything. If you look at the first requirement, after Bill said we was at step three, uh, we decided to turn our will in life, and he asked you just what do we mean and what did we do? So you look at the first requirement, is that we be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. That's right. On that basis, this is the basis. This is the basis that I'm standing on. The basis from which I'm operating. On that basis, we are almost always in collision with something or somebody, even though our motives are good. Now, if you read further from the first requirement, from that basis, all the way until you get to page 62. From, from right there, if you get to page 62, you're going to find it. And I'm not going to do much reading. I'm just going to leave it to you all. So I don't want to, you know, bore you all about much reading, right? Because yes. most people have read this over and over. You go to a meeting and a lot of meetings share and self and self center that way, you know. Mm -hmm. and all. So what we want to do is get right to the meat of the matter. Between 60 and 62, when we come up off uh, this word on that basis, the word he, him, and himself is mentioned all together at least 25 times mm -hmm. within those two pages. That's showing us that this he and him is not male specifically. The word he, it Bill is using the word he in, in the generic sense when the sex of a person is unspecified. Mm -hmm. He represents it. Also, when you look up in the dictionary, the word it is going to also refer to he, him, her, she, he. 
Y'all hear that? Yeah. Because yes, we in how it works, right? So when you say how it works, he's talking about how the human mind works when it's operating on the basis of self-will as opposed to when it's operating in God's will. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so when he, that's why you got all these he's and it's. Give you a good example. Long time ago, I'm from New Orleans. Long time ago, the, the, the women, the ladies, they used to say about another lady who was sophisticated or good looking or whatnot, or they were jealous or whatever. They used to say, oh, she thinks she missing it. Y'all ever heard that? Yeah. <laughs> See, it means the self-centered, egotistical person. That's right. That's why Bill said selfish, ego, how you put it, he said, ego, self-centric, as they like to call it nowadays. Talking about the definition of the word it back then. So if you get a dictionary going back then, you'll find out it meant the self-centered, egotistical person. And they described 25 different times about his basis of operations. Operating from that standpoint, from self-will, he said, on that basis of self-will, we're almost always in collision with something or somebody, right? Yes. And then he goes on to explain the different characteristics of this self-centered person. Then he gives us five descriptions of what he is like. Mm -hmm. And then he, he started off by saying most people, uh, each person, <coughs> y'all heard? Most people yeah. like to live by self-will. <coughs> yeah, proposal. Each person like an actor. He's not talking about just the alcoholic. He's talking about most people, each person, each person suffers from self-will run riot. Right. The alcoholic is just an extreme example okay. of self-will run riot. Okay. Though he usually doesn't think so. Uh -huh. He doesn't think so because he hasn't made that searching and fearless moral inventory yet. So that's the basis of operation that we operate on in selfish self centeredness Anything I do, you know, basis means the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. That which supports or that which is the underlying or foundation for which I'm standing. Mm -hmm. So if I'm operating on a faulty, weak, corroded basis, then anything that I do from that is going to be what? The word I would like to use, Self -will. I'm not going to use, but it would be totally messed up. You see what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. hear me? <laughs> because I'm operating from a faulty basis. So anything I do is standing on shaky ground. And then when I try to justify, you know, I'm going to always be, even if, even if I do see myself somewhat at fault, I'm going to be quite sure that others are more to blame. Y'all heard? Yeah. Right? So that's the, that's the basis of uh, that's the basis my operation the basis of operation from which I'm operating on and I'm gonna be operating on that basis because that's what it was like mm -hmm. y'all heard yeah. most people in here should be able to identify with that yeah. but then they got this thing called like in high works they tell us how our stories disclose mm -hmm. in a general way what we used to be like, what happened, and what we like now. So if we operate on a basis, a faulty basis, of self-will, then what happened? Something had to happen. Y'all ever heard a person tell a story and, you know, go to a, a speaker's meeting and a person telling his story and he stays drunk the whole story? Yes, sir. He's constantly telling you how many you drunk, how much he drank, how much he shot, how much he snipped, how much dope he used, how much crack he smoked. Until he get to the very, very end, he's still talking about it, right? Yeah. That means nothing happened. See, it's, like, it's what it was like, what happened. What happened to me was the 12 steps. 
as a, as a result of the 12 step, this is what it's like now. Now, what we had to do in order to come into a new way, we had to be confronted with what I call one of the greatest psychological masterpieces of this time. And it's a fourth step chart. Y'all heard? Yeah. It's the, it's the fourth step chart. Here, I'm going to have to go back. We went back through our lives. Nothing counted but honesty and thoughtness, right? Well, why, why I'm saying it's a psychological masterpiece is because sometimes a psychologist or a psychiatrist can hypnotize a person and put that person under, well, anybody want to, ever seen a psychologist? All right, if you go in a psychologist's office and you sit down and don't say anything, what can the psychiatrist do? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, right? Nothing. <laughs> so who really holding all the answers? Yeah. Who really holding? So he put me deep under deep hypnosis, and he tell me, go back, can it? Way back when you were between four and five years old. What are you doing? Well, I'm waking up and I'm going to the restroom. And I see a door open. Well, what do you see in the door? Well, it's mom and dad, but they look like they're wrestling or something, but they ain't hurting each other. They're just moaning and groaning. And what happened? Mama see me. What she said? Shut the door, boy. Well, well, <laughs> I'd like to go all the way back to where the stuff first started happening. Mm -hmm. To when I was playing house. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't know nothing about that. But some people know about that. So I had to go back where all of this started and uncover self. And how self was operating long before alcohol and drugs. That's right. That's right. See, alcohol was only a symptom of the problem. Self been calling shots a long time. But with the, with the, with the experience with the psychologist, once the psychologist tell me, okay, Kenny, I'm going to count to three and snap my finger, you're going to wake up. <coughs> I woke up, right? right? And don't remember nothing about what went on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But see, this psychological masterpiece tell me to go down there with a flashlight. I'm going to illuminate wide open. I'm going to illuminate every dark cranny and nook of the past. I'm going to bring it all out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. This is what the fourth step enabled me to do. What's the topic? Selfish self-centeredness to from selfish self-centeredness to the St. Francis prayer. How I'm gonna confront the self is directly confronted by the fourth step. My faults, when I, everybody here has done a fourth step, right? Yeah. When I get to the point of my faults, I'm looking at my selfishness, my dishonesty, my inconsiderateness my fears, and my self-seeking, right? I'm looking at how my, my, my instincts, my basic instincts that God gave me to be uh, uh, used for my benefit. This, my house, is called a house cleaning process, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to find out how my pride has been uh, distorted. My security, my financial security, and my emotional security. My self-esteem levels, my personal relationship, and my sexual. I'm going to see how all that's been warped and turns into this. And I'm doing it with my eyes wide open. That's right. And just in case I miss any of it, or don't want to bring out all of it, or unable to bring out all of it, I'm going to call another human being to witness it. In the fifth step. Right or wrong? Right. That's what we do. So once it addresses this selfishness directly, it, 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 the, the fourth step confronts it head on. Matter of fact, if you look on the page where the fourth step chart is, what page that's on, the fourth step chart, y'all? Uh, 65. Yeah. 65? 65. Or 55? 
miles. Look at the look. This is what they told us. There was there is a whole entire paragraph above the fourth step chart. Somebody read it. Janice on the holiday. On our brush list. No. You said that's not it. Read it. Hold on, alcoholic addict. We were usually as definite as this example. That's a whole entire paragraph. We were usually as definite as this example. I don't have it the way it's uh, in the book. But because I tr had trouble putting it all together. Y'all see this? Mm -hmm. But y'all do see the book, right? Yeah, right. So the, the word definite means exact. We were exactly, this is what we did. And they said, rather have we seen the first pair we started following our path. Okay, when we move through the fourth step, we're going to come to the fears list. And this is on page 68. Let me know when y'all got 68. Okay. Remember, my basis of operation in the beginning was selfish, self-centeredness, inconsiderateness, self-seeking, and all them it's and he's about the person trying to run the whole show and trying to rearrange the lights. Y'all remember all of that? Yeah. That's my basis of operation. But once I get a little further into this process, they're going to say perhaps there is a better way. We think so. But we are now on a different basis. Right? <laughs> the other basis that been supplanted. The other basis I was operating on has been supplanted. Now I'm on a different basis. The basis of trusting and relying upon God. We trust infinite God rather than our finite self. We are in the world to play the role he assigns. So now I'm on, I'm operating from a different basis. I've found out what my character defects are, right? I can find out how my, uh, my house members, my household members have been deformed. When I say household members, I'm talking about my self-esteem that God gave me and been corrupted. My personal relation, my sex relation that God gave me, natural, God-given, and therefore good, but I have corrupted them. Right or wrong? Right. They told us a long time ago, it's a house cleaning job, right? That a man's enemies shall be those of his own household. Y'all ever heard that? Yeah. Yes. Huh? <laughs> That's just like you yeah. said, you your worst enemy? Yeah. So the members of my own household have conspired to, to enslave me. Mm. You know, they got the God man and God man cowering in a dark corner, afraid to come out. Y'all heard that? Yeah. I got to go down there with a searchlight and get it. Because he in darkness. You know, he ain't like Dracula. Dracula loves the darkness. Right. But, but, but the God man that's in me, he's cowering. In the, we got to go down there and free the slave. And liberate the captive. <laughs> and bring out the real man. Y'all understand? So yeah. to speak. Yeah. Yes. So this is what we're in the process of doing. When I find out that what my selfishness, my character has been defected. That part from page 60 to 62 is, 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 is a, the very epitome of the definition of a self-centered, selfish, egotistical maniac. So when I find out what all my faults are, I'm going to go in step six and bring them to God. I'm going to be willing to bring them to God. And in step seven, I'm going to only pray to God to remove my defects in my character. Isn't that what happened? Yeah. You know, this is how, when, when I go to eight and make a list, step eight and make a list, and go back and correct the past, <laughs> re-establish and, and uh, what is it? make amends, this is what they call it. Yeah. I'm showing God that I'm sincere and honest in my prayer when I ask him to remove them. Yeah. You heard? Yeah. And, then, and, then, and this is how, this is how my dark past in God's hand becomes my greatest asset. 
Y'all heard, ever heard that? Yes. It's my, it's my dog, not my angelic nature. It ain't the good things about Kenneth that God uses. It's the dark things that I can share with another human being who's going through the same darkness and don't know how to get out. Mm -hmm. It's my dark past in God's hands when I turn it over becomes my greatest asset. Yeah. That's what generally happens. So when I... It, they, they, got a, they got another old saying said a long time ago, though your sins be as scarlet, he'll make them white as snow. Y'all understand that? Yes. Yeah. So my dark pass in God's hand becomes my greatest asset. They said no matter how far down the scale we have gone, we'll see how our experience can benefit us. Me? The, the, uh, anybody ever shared in a, in a meeting, and you were sharing in a meeting on a topic, and you were sharing some horrible stuff about your own self. Mm -hmm. And a newcomer came to you after the meeting. Say, man, I'm glad you shared. Yeah. What would you share? Yeah. Can you be my sponsor? Y'all ever heard yes, that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's my dog fair. I remember I was downtown at the men's center. And I was sharing about, because they were talking about the fourth step. And I remember doing the fourth step, while I was doing the fourth step, what happened July 6, 1969? I put up at 2 o'clock in the morning, I pulled out a 22 pistol, a gun, thinking that the gun was empty, and put it to my brother's head, and pulled the trigger, and he died in my arms. And I never realized until I was doing a fourth step years later that I was drinking that night. Y'all heard me? Yeah. I had never associated that with drinking until I was doing a four step. One guy came to me. After the meet, I'm on the outside of all the men's center smoking. And he looked at me, he was crying. I wanted, and he, he, he shared what he told me he would never share how he had killed two people. One was his brother. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. My dog passed. In God's hand is my greatest asset. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm going to have to share some things about me in order to help a new man. Right. Y'all heard? So God takes and make what I thought was to be the worst part about me, and it actually helps the new man. That's, I think, I don't, I, I, I personally don't believe that we are in here because we was quiet enough. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless, they got some of us just might have, you know, skipped over a lot of that kind of stuff I'm talking about. But the vast majority of us didn't. You know, we came through the ringer. And that's what enables us to help the other man. Now, once all of this takes place, I get the nine, I get the step ten, this is what they're going to tell me. Reconstruction ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all ever heard that? Yes, sir. That's because there's a long road of destruction behind. Mm -hmm. So if you turn to page 127 in the big book, what I say, 127? Yes, yes. Yeah. Y'all see what it says, the head of the house? Yep, yep. Uh -huh. The head of the house ought to remember that he is mainly to blame for what befell his home. Yep. He can scarcely square the account in his lifetime. He can hardly set that matter straight in his lifetime. That's what they tell him. They say on, on, on this that it's a lifelong journey, right? Yeah. When we got to step 10, on page 84, they told us, this is not an overnight matter. Yeah. It should continue for a lifetime. That's what they told us, right? Yeah. So we go to page 73 in the 12 and 12. Okay. 
And this is what he's going to say. Y'all got 73? Page 73 in the 12 and 12. Everybody got it? So it is, second paragraph, so it is that we first see humility as a necessity. We first see it as a necessity. But this is the barest beginning. To get completely away from our aversion to the idea of being humble, to gain a vision of humility as an avenue to true freedom of the human spirit, to be willing to work for humility as something to be desired for itself takes most of us a long, long time. You ever heard old time a share in the room? Yeah, I've been through seven years ago, but I'm still selfish. Mm -hmm. I still got some issues. Y'all ever heard that? Yeah. It takes most of us a long, long time. A whole lifetime geared to self-centeredness cannot be set in reverse all at once. Rebellion dubs our every step. That's why it's telling us it's a lifelong process. Turn to page 84. No, uh, we read it. I, I quoted that already. Oh, okay. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter. It should continue for our lifetime. That's in the big book. We quoted that already, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we go to page 65 in the 12 and 12. It says, y'all got 65? Yeah. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires. You know, I really look at the way Bill wrote that. Since most of us, like some of us, might not be born like that, right? He says, since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfaction or pleasures than are possible or do us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, of our sins. If we ask, if we ask, God will certainly forgive our derelictions. But in no case does he render us white as snow and keep us that way without our cooperation. That is something we are supposed to, are supposed to be willing to work toward ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So, step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. It's AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on his lifetime job. Y'all heard that? Mm -hmm. Turn to 12 and 12, page 50. Page 50 in the 12 and 12. Down at about the third paragraph. Y'all see that? Since step four, see that? Mm -hmm. Since step four is but the beginning of a lifetime practice, it can be suggested that he first have a look at those personal flaws which are acutely troublesome and fairly obvious. These. Yeah, y'all see that? Using his best judgment of what has been right and what has been wrong, he might make a rough survey of his conduct with respect to his primary instincts for sex, security, and society. All right. That, they let us know that this is the beginning, only the beginning, mm -hmm. of a lifetime job. Ten comes back and tells us we're going to have to continue <coughs> to take personal inventory. Mm -hmm. Even step three. Once I said the, the step three prayer, 
They said this. This is what they said. This was only a beginning. Though if honestly and humbly made, a great effect sometimes was felt at once. Mm -hmm. But he said uh, it could have no permanent effect unless we went on with the fourth step. So this continuing to take personal inventory and continuing to watch myself and picking up these principles as I go along, I'm going to eventually get to step 11. All right? I'm going to eventually get to step 11. Now, in step 11 on page 85, the big book. No, this, this is going to be in the, the 12 and 12. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm going to get to... Oh, I'm looking for the St. Francis Prayer. 99. Oh, y'all know that by heart. Page 99? That's what we're looking for. 99. 12 and 12? Yeah, the 12 and 12. Yeah. With all of these tools that are picked up. Now, can y'all see a process, first of all, how we was beginning to get from selfish, self-centeredness to the St. Francis Prayer, how we got there? Mm -hmm. And what happened to enable us to come up on a new basis? basis right. Now, it was quickly uh, presented, but I'm presenting to people who I know from what I'm looking at, is intelligent enough to receive what I'm saying. Y'all following me, right? Yes, sir. So uh, that's why it's being presented this way. You know, so uh, y'all can, can follow what I'm saying. So now we get to the 11th step prayer. And we, let's look at this. He says, Lord, make me a channel of thy peace that where there's hatred, I may bring love. That where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. That where there is discord, I may bring harmony. That where there is error, I may bring truth. That where there is doubt, I may bring faith. That where there is despair, I may bring hope. That where there are shadows, I may bring light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted. To understand than to be understood. To love than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Once I awaken to eternal life, hold on to that, hold on to that. Once I awaken, y'all ever heard, I'm going to have to die to myself? Right. Yeah. I'm going to have to sacrifice myself? You know, so, you know, once I, I'm going to have to die to myself <coughs> so that I can rise up again right. with power. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. On the third step. <laughs> from which the action is being recorded. The word bring is a verb. Alright? To convey, lead, carry. To convey, lead, carry, or cause to come along with one toward the place from which the action is being recorded. Another meaning of it is to cause to be, act, or move in a special way, such as persuade, induce, to cause to come into a particular state or condition.
to carry, convey, or conduct. What does the 12th step tell us to do? Having had a spiritual awakening, as a result of these steps, we try to do what? Carry. How do we carry? By exactly this, my conduct. Y'all heard me? Mm -hmm. my, the best way for me to carry a message is not from my words, it's from my conduct. Sure. What the big book said, his whole department shouts at the new man that he is a man with a real answer, right? Yeah. My whole department, not my words, the way I conduct myself. Right. So when I'm, this is, this is what, it's all about walking, not talking. Right. You know when I'm, what, you know, wasn't I a producer of confusion on the other basis? Right. Yeah. Now I'm a producer of harmony, something has happened. Right? right? Where, where it's confusion, I may bring harmony, right? So from a producer of confusion to a producer of harmony in the 11th step. Some of y'all familiar with this. That I may bring this. I'm not asking God to bring it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be his agent, right? That's right. I'm supposed to be his representative. That's right. So once I appear on the scene, you're supposed to see God in action. Right. <laughs> <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even, even for the person that don't believe in God, he sees me. <laughs> He said that I may bring. So that word bring means to carry. And once I'm carrying the message, that means it's with me. You can't carry something you don't have. Right or wrong? Right. And you can't bring something you ain't got. Right. The book that told us you cannot transmit what you haven't got. You understand? It's obviously. It says it obviously. You know, you come and ask me for a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. But I ain't got it. What kind of foolishness is that? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you want it right. I don't have it. Right or wrong? Right. So I can't carry it with me. So these principles that I've picked up, the honesty, the hope, the faith, the love, all of this translates, translates, all of it translates into this. Love. Whether it was wrong, I'm bringing forgiveness. I learned all that in nine, right? Mm -hmm. That when there's discord, I may bring harmony. That when there's error, I may bring truth. Before I was one dishonest son of a gun. Yes, sir. Remember this quality here, dishonest? But when there's error, I may bring truth now. I'm hope. I'm, I'm, I can't bring hope if I ain't got hope. That's it. See, uh, light. Remember I was in the dark? Right. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I mean, hey, the tables didn't flip. Right. Right. You know, turn the light on Dracula and watch what happened. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, nowadays they got them dead walkers. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, some of them wearing that ring, you know, and they all of them want the, the prize of walking in the, in the light. They want to have their king Creatures of the dark want to masquerade as creatures of the light. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, Lord grant that I may seek rather the comfort than to be comforted. When, I, when somebody that has passed away, a loved one, a family member, then passed away, and I have the steps, I've taken the steps. And I go to the funeral. It could be my brother, my mother, my daughter, my sister, my auntie that passed away. My job, once I appear on the scene, is not to look to be comforted. It's to comfort as many people as I can find. That's right. You heard? That's right. And by doing that, I find my own comfort. Come on, man. Y'all hear? Yes. So by, by comforting them, I find my own comfort. Y'all understand? That's yeah. right. You know, I ain't looking for nothing. Oh, okay, I told you. I said, well, wait a minute. Can I get you a cup of coffee? <laughs> you want a sandwich or something? Can I help you? How you doing? How's everything? Now, my job is to come with them. Even when I go to my place of worship, if I'm going to the church, if I go back to the church, I'm not going to the church to get help. I'm going there to help the struggling priest. I'm supposed to be a bright light in that congregation.
congregation. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Yeah. They got a whole lot of ministers suffering from alcoholism. I'm looking for him. Let me take you through these steps. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No, well, I'm, I'm, because I'm carrying the message, right? Yeah. And when I'm, when I'm, when I'm when, whatever's at the mosque, the church, the synagogue, whatever, I'm going to be a help and a light in that congregation, right? Mm-hmm. Because I've had a spiritual awakening. What does the 12th step tell us? Having had. That's good, right? That means I got it already. That's good. That means if this is an 11th step prayer, that means I already got it. Uh-huh. Y'all heard? Yeah. So as a result of me having it, I'm going to carry this message. Now, I can carry the message and talk also. You know, I can tell you all, yeah, man, I've had a spiritual awakening. I've had an entire psychic change. And I love the Lord. That's what I'm saying in the rooms. Y'all hear me? Yeah. But once I walk outside, yeah. I'm backbiting. <laughs> I'm cheating. I'm lying. Mm-hmm. Somebody loaned me something, you know, you got to. Constantly ask for it. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's a difference in talking and walking. Right. So once I walk it, I don't have to tell you I believe in God. Because you see it. You've been talking if I have to tell you I believe in God, who I'm trying to convince? Yourself. You or me. You. You're supposed to be able to see it. That's right. By how I treat you. That's right. Ain't y'all, ain't some people that have some complaints about people in the room? Oh man, I hear them talking and talk, man, but you know, I, I see them doing all of this and doing all You ever heard that? Yeah. yeah. No, we don't want to be examples like that. Yeah. We want to be examples of the light, right? That's right. Yeah. It also means now that none of us get holy. That it don't mean that we free from blemish without spot of blemish. That's right. That means we ain't saints. Right. Y'all heard? Yes. That means I'm gonna fall short sometimes. Right. Yes. But you know the person who falls short, just like the unbeliever, the person that doesn't believe in God, he never asks God for forgiveness because first of all, he don't believe God exists. Right. That's right. <laughs> so he stays in that condition. Right. So when I fall short, you know, I'm going to God. That's right. <laughs> then he told me in the step, uh. As uh, soon as you take your inventory, ask God for forgiveness, right? Because I'm find somewhere down the day, I, during the day, I've done something wrong. So me, I'm going to ask for forgiveness, so I have hope today. But the unbeliever, he don't entertain hope like we do, because he don't ask for forgiveness, you heard? So I'm not saying we become saints. I'm not saying we become holy. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, if I see... A woman walking down the street and she uh, exposed someone. I'm not going to cut my eye out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not going to tell myself I don't see what I'm looking at. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They call that being self deceived. You see what I'm saying? But I don't have to act on impulses anymore. That's right. And if I do act on impulses, I'm, we're not saints. That's right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So, you know, uh, don't don't get it twisted. Yeah. You know, uh, it's saying one thing, but it's constantly telling us to continue to watch for this dirty, low-down son of a gun called self. Because once you crucify self, He can get up again. Oh, yes. <laughs> Y'all heard? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm that, that's, that's the reason why he can't just die. You got to crucify him. You got to nail his hands and his feet because he'll get up again. Y'all heard? And he'll have more power than he had the first time. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the people with him, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's Anybody real. got any questions? That's real. <laughs> that's real. What you got? My name is Mike Delvin, Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, when you was going through the 12 and 12 and, and, and reading from the 11 step, you answered it because I heard I about 8 to 10 times, and you answered that one. Thank you. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I. That I may bring. Yeah. I'm not asking God to bring it. I'm supposed to be carrying his life, right? That's right. Anybody got any questions? Let me tell y'all something. These workshops, we recall these workshops. Yes. Alright? So, next month, this workshop is going to be on CD. And we do not sell the CD. But if you want to make a donation for it, you can make a donation and just pick the CD up. That's going to be in the, uh, what you call it? After this meet, they're going to have food up in there. I'm hoping y'all have that eat. Have food. Fellowship, have fun, and I'm hoping, I hope to God that this has been helpful. Right. Yeah. See, because I, yeah. all I'm doing, you got to remember something. This is not what I came up with. Yeah. I'm simply reading what's in that book. Y'all heard? Right. The first 100 came up with that. So all of the credit goes to them. And they're going to give all the credit to God. Right. You know, it's just like the atheist or the agnostic that comes in the program, he'll tell you, I don't believe in God. The group is my God. Y'all ever heard that? Yeah. The group is my higher power. I have heard a bunch of them say that. But who does the group call a higher power? Huh? The atheist and the agnostic say the group is my higher power, but who's the higher power of the group? God, right? right. Yeah. So indirectly, who is he with? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if he needs to hold on to us until he can get aligned himself, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We welcome him. Yeah. Y'all heard? Yeah. We welcome him. Because when I came in, even though I had all this religious knowledge, I wouldn't limit any of it. But y'all was. Y'all was so. So I quit praying in the beginning. I start asking y'all for guidance. What do you do? Because I remember praying. Lord, I swear, if you get me out of this time, I swear. I remember doing that a whole bunch of times. It didn't work. You see what I'm saying? So I start asking the sponsor questions. I start asking the group questions. Y'all know what I'm saying? How did you do it? So indirectly, the group became my power. You heard? Yeah. In directly. I had sense enough to know that the group wasn't God. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but the group became my higher power in the sense that they had the power to stay sober and I did. That's right. You heard? And that was enough for me to make a beginning. That was enough for me to make a beginning. Any questions? Yeah, I got a comment. Um, when you was reading from the doctor's opinion on XXI, with Dr. Silkworks asked that the only question is said, what is the solution? And then it went into um, about one year ago that he experienced a man. That man it was talking about, from what I understand, was called um, Hank Parkinson. Hank Parkinson wrote the chapter to the, the employers. Hank Parkinson wrote another book called The Unbelievers. But Hank Parkinson, he relapsed, and they took his name and his information out of the book. There's a book called The Experience, Strength, and Hope, and it is the book it is the book that's, uh, it's all in the book of the book called The Books That Was Removed from the First Edition. They took Hank Parkinson's information out of the first edition after he relapsed. Oh. Ain't that so? Ain't. Ain't, ain't that so? You see, we got people. That's why I don't, I talk, I don't talk to people like they're ignorant. <laughs> I, I, I talk to yeah. people like they got some sense. You hear what I'm saying? That's what, that, you see that knowledge, that bit that he just came out with? Uh -huh. These people. These people is not stupid people. Okay. Alcoholics and addicts, I always say it, is some of the most intelligent people on the face of this planet. That's why we always wind up with other people's money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. So y'all, join me in a moment of silence. Sit right where you at. God. God. Grant me the to accept the things I cannot change. Courage, change things I can, and a wisdom to know the difference. I hope this has been helpful. Y'all go eat. All right. Very helpful.